You are at the Church of Rock radio show at KSKQ in Southern Oregon, 89.5 FM, Ashland, 94.1 FM, Medford. That was X with Hungry Wolf. And we, uh, as promised, have the gentleman that played drums on that track and all of the X albums. His name is DJ Bonebreak, and he is calling us, I believe, uh, from Los Angeles, California. And he's on the phone right now. Let's bring him up now. Hey, DJ. Hello. How's it going, brother? It's going great. How are you? Yes, I am in Los Angeles. Nice. So you must be listening to the show at home right now. Um, doing what? Oh, no, I'm not. I, I'm not I can't listen uh, while I'm talking. Oh, because the echo factor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. How's it going okay, tonight, man? Just say, turn, your, turn your radio station down. Yeah. <laughs> so you can hear her. That's funny. How's it going, man? It's going good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm home, and, and we, you know, X just finished a tour. We, we played most of of May, and uh, we played in the in the South. Went all the way across the country from. Uh, um, let's see, where did we start? We started in uh, Arizona, and no, we started in New Mexico. We went all the way to Florida. So, and uh, yeah, we're going to be touring quite a bit this year because it's our 40th anniversary. That that was my the next words out of my mouth were it's your 40th. How does it feel, man? You guys still seem to be like full of vigor and keep going, and you guys are not slowing down at all, huh? Uh, I don't know. I, we have momentum, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it feels all right, you know. Well, since and we're speaking of the fortieth, do you is there any chance of a new X album? Any new material from the band coming from you guys? Uh, not right now. You may have to wait until you know the forty fifth anniversary, or <laughs> I don't know when. It just it's a whole other it it's a whole other thing to get people to sit down and write all new material and all that, isn't it? It takes a lot of work. Yeah, it's a big push, you know. Boy, that would be something we could, I guess, just hope for. How is Billy Zoom doing, DJ? Uh, Billy Zoom is doing well. He's he, he's a lot better. He's he's been through all the chemo. Uh, he had bladder cancer. It's been almost two years now, and he had a lot. He had uh, the initial operation and chemo, and then uh, they put him on this program for uh, almost a year and a half uh, just to keep it away. You know, wow. So every ten weeks, he'd have to do more chemo. But he's off that. He got off of it earlier this year and he's in good health so um yeah that's good news yeah that's really good news I, i've quite a few of the fans uh, that we've talked to in the last couple of days about this interview most of them have said something to the effect of hey ask him about billy and then we've got a listener named steve westkirchen who actually sent over a slew of questions and he pretty much wrote out the entire interview for me so thank you steve <laughs> uh yeah thank uh, what you. a I was going to ask you about something. We're all fans of X, and then, of course, you were a part of um, the band The Knitters. Will the, will the Knitters ever be reforming, or how, what's up with that? Yeah, we, you know, we, we took a little break. I mean, we're, we're kind of a long... Ooh, we're losing band. you there. For, we're, how do you put it? To, you know, it, it took us... If you think of it this way, it took us 20 years to, to, for a follow-up record. <laughs> right. First one came out in 85, and the 2005 was the next one. So... Um, you know, we've all been busy. Uh, Dave Alvin has been on the road constantly with you know his band and with Dave and Phil, and you know he's always busy. So uh, when the time is right, we'll play again. Fair enough, man. Yeah, you guys seem to just be the kind of people that like to play out a lot, and you're touring a lot. Uh, it must it must be one of those things where some people get really fried by that, and there's others that seem to just like Willie Nelson. You know, certain people that just have to be on the road all the time. Is there a difference yeah. of of people? Is there like a different animal sort of that yeah, tours? There might be. I know. I, I, there might be that. I mean, part sometimes it's it's a different animal. People who actually thrive on the road, and other times it, it, it it's you know, purely pragmatic. You know, if you need the money, you go on the road. You know, <laughs> it's a job, some people right. are songwriters, and they and they live out of the mailbox, or you know, or something. And they have a rich uncle, or <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and other people, you know, need to go on the road. But 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 yeah, I, I think you have to enjoy it because you could burn out so quickly. You know, yeah. Um, it, it 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 really isn't easy, even if you like it. You know, I mean, I love it, but but it, wear, it wears me out every time. I I get home and it's like. Oh, that was hard. You know? Yeah, <laughs> because you have to perform every night and travel. And but but I like the things in between. Luckily, I like you know I like sitting in the van. I could read books and listen to music, and you know um, I like you know playing better every night. You know, uh, so you know it's uh, I you know yeah. 
That's good though. You you find something to do with all that space that you know a lot of people end up doing drugs or alcohol or you know I'm sure in your younger days there was probably more of that going on too or whatever. But it is weird how you're really only doing something for what an hour or two a night or whatever it is, and the rest of the time is not even a music thing at all. It's just the no, whole. It's, it's it's not. It's logistics, and it's you know it's trying to get enough sleep and traveling and eating, and then you do, you know you do a sound check, but that's hardly work. You go in, and, you know, it takes time. You know, you show up and you you check everything then you either go back to the, to the hotel or sit around the dressing room and yeah that's that's the part that can really you know mess you up and then the, the other one is after the show because you're so you know wound up you know everything is so intense that you know hour and 15 minutes or hour and a half and then you have to come down you know and that's the hard part you have to you know just do yoga or something or drink a beer or yeah know. You know, whatever it takes it to get to go to sleep, so you can get up, you know, and start it all over again. So. Yeah, because uh, you know, being a vocalist myself, I do in a very super teeny tiny small way relate to that because the endorphins get pumping, and then it's like you want to just go home after the show, and you're like, man, I'm just naturally high, and like I'm up, you know. Yeah, so. you are for hours, and you know, it can be it can be hard to say how many hours, but yeah, you have to force yourself to to, to, to relax. Yeah, I mean, just think of if you get home from a regular job, let's say you get home at 6 o'clock, you don't go to bed at 8 o'clock. Well, maybe some people do, but right. you, know, you, you, you calm down a bit, and it might take hours and hours. But when it, it's even more intense, I think, after you, you know, play a really, you know, well, any kind of show. You play a show, you're performing, you know. Yeah. Is it um, still a thrill? I know it's always a thrill, but is it still does it still get you off like doing music and doing live shows like it did back in when you started? You know, in the early days. Oh yeah, yeah, it it, it is. It, it, I mean, it's, there's uh, there's nothing like it. It's it's hard to explain, but but you know, you're you're for one, you want to do well. You know, if you're if you're a good performer, you you want to do your best every night. Right. And. Uh, and, and and there's so many variables you don't know if it's going to happen or not you know it's it's uh, and that's the other thing you, you, you let me see if I can explain it but yeah yeah you you you, um, you 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 yeah you get off on it because you get a response from people you 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 uh, you judge yourself you know <laughs> Right. Like you want to be the best you can be, then, then if you're not the best, you go, oh, I'm going to try, you know, try to make it better tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, right. It's really exciting. I mean, just with, when people get together, just, you know, that thing, when you're not on, uh, you know, uh, uh, social media, I mean, there's just something happens when real people get together. So that, that's enough to make it exciting. And yeah. You add music and you add, you know, well, you add the other stuff. True. <laughs> That's well, bad stuff, but you know, well, alcohol and, and right. too much of it. Yeah, and just like I said again, you know, never having been any, anywhere close to the stuff you've done in your career with music, I can see why people do turn to drugs and alcohol. Though I really can, because uh, for one, if you're on the road all the time, I can't imagine, and I can't. I've never done it where I was gone so often that I would never see my kid or never be around my family. I could see how you would just be lonely and be like, y- y- you have to turn to something for to fill the emptiness, so whether it's yoga or or dope or whatever it might be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you do, you you feel like you need something. That's that's the advantage of being older because you've been through it. Yeah. When you're younger, you you know, you just go to that stuff and go, "Oh yeah, I'll drink, drink, drink," you know. You're right. And and when you're older, you realize, "Okay, you'll get through this. It's, you know, no big deal." And you start <laughs> doing positive things like Yes. You know, I mean, I I I I, I was always a jogger, so when I, I would go on the road, I you know I wasn't always perfect. I would drink beer too, but sometimes I would just go, okay, I'm I'm straight. I'm going to run, you know, after the show or before the show, or yeah. And then uh, also I practice a lot, so that's the other thing. I you know go well, okay, I've got to feel better so I can, you know, practice my paradiddles. So yeah, uh, but it is yeah, it's it, 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 it's tough on the road. And one, my, my old friend Wendy O. Williams, back in the 80s, we were talking, and she was telling me the benefits of running and yoga, and she was, uh, you know, didn't do drugs or alcohol, so she was a big influence on me, even though I was a, a drug and alcohol user myself. Wendy O. Williams is the one that actually taught me uh, what you just said about how being healthy as a rocker as opposed to being destructive, and it was, it was an amazing thing to learn. And then Jello Biafra, in about 86 from the Dead Kennedys, told me one time, 
I was offered him a beer backstage. He goes, you know, when you do what I do, you, and you drink and you get drunk before the show, you get a hangover in, in about a half an hour. And I was like, that yeah. is so incredibly profoundly true, you know? It's not the same thing. So, yeah, being younger, yeah. Uh, is, turning to that stuff is, is true, but being older, you start realizing you don't need any of those crutches, you know? It's just... Uh, right. You need yoga. Yeah. No, <laughs> whatever. You don't. And, and I feel lucky that I'm, I don't get nervous before a show. You know, I, I, I rarely drink before a show. Um, That's awesome. And sometimes I don't drink at all. But other times, I, if I'm going to have some beers, I wait until after. And then I have a, you know, a couple beers to, to come down. But, but, uh, and you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> also, as a drummer, you don't want to, you know, you don't want it to get in the way of your, your, your time or your, you know, yeah. you know, the physical things you have to do. Yeah, when we talked off the air just for a, a second about the possibility of maybe somehow someday X maybe appearing in Southern Oregon, I'm hoping to um, speak with you off the air briefly through social media to find out if we can make that happen because there are people down here that have been, been asking about it, and there's a great theater called the Rogue uh, Theater in Grants Pass, which is just an incredible theater, and uh, I think it would be perfect. So I would love to try to make that happen somehow, man. Well, that, that'd be fantastic. I mean, you know, we usually just stop in Grants Pass or, you know, or past Grants Pass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, it would be great to play a show there. Maybe the annual North, Northwest Christmas tour or something. I don't know. I'm just excited because we have a lot of fans, and I believe all these little areas down here in these little mountain towns, I think it, we'd fill that place no problem. There's a lot of X fans here, that's for sure. So well, that, would, that, would, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that'd be cool. And um, I was gonna say, um, after the interview, we were gonna play some tunes by uh, a song by the Bone Break Syncopators. I really love the music you did with the, with that group or with that project or whatever it might. I don't know if it was a group or project. Well, thank you. I mean, we're not really playing anymore, um, but we started in two thousand in two thousand. Yeah, and because I play vibes on the side, you know, the vibraphone. Love that. Uh, Best I can, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good <laughs> stuff, amateur, man. Amateur jazzer, you know, not, not that good. But I, I met uh, T.K. Smith, um, and a, a great guitar player, and he, he was originally with, with Big Sandy. And he said, "Oh, we've got this little band, and, and you know, you should play vibes." So we started playing, and was uh, uh, you know, playing around town, and did finally did one album. So yeah, Jeremy Wakefield is the other. He's a lap steel player, amazing player. Um, Wally Hersom, who also played with Big Sandy, plays bass. And uh, after about a year or two, we, we added Dave Stuckey, who was who, uh, on drums uh, and vocals. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a multi-instrumentalist, plays guitar and sings and does everything. So, yeah, we, we played around town. We played some jazz, kind of 30s country swing. And... Uh, but then, but then the, the band dissipated. You know, people started moving away from L.A. Right. Uh, Jeremy Wakefield moved to Portland, and T.K. Smith moved to the desert, and, you know, it's hard to sustain the band. But we, we put in a good, uh, well, we did a, a show maybe a year or two ago. So I'd say a good 15 years. That's not bad for a band. Not at all, you know, man, no. Especially totally when... unknown. It, what's this, it's cool that you do so many things, you know, X, the Bone Break Syncopators, the DJ Bone Break Trio, and you've also done stuff with other people, too. It's, it's cool. And because you haven't been such a, like, druggy, alcoholic guy, you can tell that you're alive and you have this vibrant energy. It's nice to see somebody that's, um, how do you say it? Because I'm up there with you in age. It's nice to see somebody aging, with, but staying classy and, keeping, and being real and not falling apart and just bringing such joyful music, man. You know. Well, well, thank you. I, you know, I try to keep busy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the thing. You know, I, I, I think I learned that when when X took a I don't know what you call it a sabbatical. You know, we, we stopped playing for about a year in 19, uh, 1988, and uh, and then I realized I, I I don't have any connections. I've been on the road with with a, the same band forever. <laughs> wow, it's your life. Meeting people and playing around town and playing different types of music, and I you know I was desperate for a job. So, so I've, I've sustained that. Every time I come back from tour, you know, I'm playing with someone. I call people up and, you know, do you want to do, you know, ready to do a gig? That's awesome. Uh, sessions and, you know, I think that's the only way to do it. And also, as a drummer, you want to keep, you know, you want to keep fit. So you don't want to sit around for three <laughs> right. months and do nothing, and, you know. Well, that's awesome, man. I, I'm really inspired by you, man. And, you know, uh, this show's been on the air 17 years, and I think it's your fourth time uh, being kind enough to join us because we know we're big fans and everything. And uh, I really appreciate your time, man. Well, you're quite welcome. Thanks for having me on. And uh, hello to everyone in Southern Oregon. Hope we can we can come out there sometime. And, and 
but really, thank you so much. For sure, DJ. We'll be following your, your music and you on face, uh, social media, and maybe down the road we'll talk to you again on the show sometime. I hope so. Okay. Awesome, my friend. Thanks so much. Much love, brother. All right. Take care. Yeah, Goodbye. Take, take care. Bye.